The camera world is buzzing again, Nikon is making waves, and for good reason. The Z9 Mark II, or Z92 as it might be called, is real. Not just a rumor, it's happening, and it could arrive sooner than we all expected. Possibly just before the 2026 Winter Olympics, why that timing? Because global events are where camera giants show off their best tech, and Nikon is getting ready to take the spotlight, but here's the big question. Is the Z9 to just another flagship camera? Or is it a leap into the future? Is it a must-have tool for professionals? Or just expensive overkill for most users? Let's break down everything we know so far. Section 1, global shutter revolution at the heart of the excitement is one word global shutter. It might not sound flashy, but it's a massive deal. Almost every camera today, even top tier ones, use rolling shutters. Rolling shutters read the image line by line. It works fine in most situations, but when the action gets fast, the problems. Start, think panning shots, think sports, think birds in flight. Suddenly, straight lines bend, moving objects warp. It's subtle, but for pros, it matters a lot. A global shutter changes that. It reads the entire image at once, no bending, no. Warping, no skew, just clean, sharp, accurate frames whether it's stills or video. That alone could make the Z90 to a game changer for sports shooters, wildlife photographers, or anyone shooting fast action. There's more. A global shutter means faster flash sync speeds. With a rolling shutter, the flash has to fire at just the right time as the sensor scans, but with a global shutter, you can fire the flash at any moment. That opens up new possibilities for lighting especially in tough conditions, but global shutters have trade-offs. They've traditionally struggled with low lights and dynamic range. That's the range between the darkest shadows and the brightest highlights. It's critical for creating stunning images, especially in tricky lighting dot. So the big question, can Nikon deliver a global shutter that doesn't sacrifice image quality? If they do, it's a major step forward not just for Nikon, but for the industry. Section 2, speed that changes the game now, let's talk speed. Because the Z92 isn't just about image quality, it's about capturing the moment, reports. Say it can shoot raw images at 40 frames per second. Let that sink in, 44 resolution raw photos every second. That's double what the Z9 could do dot, and if you shoot JPEG? Up to 240 frames per second, that's faster than many video frame rates. Imagine capturing the exact moment a bird takes off, or a punch lands in a boxing match, or a sprinter hits the finish line. This kind of speed isn't just impressive. For professionals, it's necessary dot, and then there's pre-capture raw. This feature starts buffering images before you even press the shutter. So even if you react late, the camera already has the moment saved. It's like a time machine, this. Has shown up in some Nikon models after firmware updates, but it was missing from the Z9. That upset a lot of users. Many believed Nikon held the feature back on purpose to make the Z9 to more attractive. That may or may not be true, but what's clear is this. Pre-capture RAW on the Z92 will be a huge asset for action, and wildlife shooters who can't afford to miss a single moment. Section 3, a new brain for a new era to handle all of this. The Z92 will need serious processing power. Enter Nikon's new XPE-8 chip. This isn't just an upgrade. It's a whole new generation. This processor has to manage a lot. Reading data from a global shutter, processing 40 raw images per second, Handling high-resolution video, driving the autofocus system, running the menus, and probably doing it all without overheating. It's expected to support 8,000 video. High frame rate for K and better video tools overall. Nikon has already rolled out Unlog to in some cameras the log color profile that gives creators more control in post-production. Expect the Z92 to refine that even more. This camera isn't just for photographers. It's for hybrid shooters, people who shoot video and stills, people who want to color grade their footage, push their files in editing, and create cinematic visuals all from one body. Section 4, 
cooling, size, and build now for the practical stuff. High performance cameras get hot, especially when you shoot 8,000 video or high speed bursts. It's a known issue. Even the Z9 had heat limits, but Nikon might have a solution. They showed a modified Z9 at CES 2025, built for extreme long duration shooting in outer space. Part of their moon camera project, if even a bit of that thermal management tech trickles into the Z9 too, it could mean major improvements for every day. Creators dot as for size and weight, don't expect a compact body. The Z9 was large, the Z9 II will likely follow suit. That's not ideal for casual shooters, but professionals often prefer the larger body it balances well with big lenses, offers better grip, and fits more controls and ports. Section 5. Competition and cost of course, Nikon isn't alone in this race. Sony is working on its A1 successor, possibly the A12 or A12. Canon is prepping the EOS R1. These cameras will likely hit similar marks high speed, top autofocus, powerful. Video features. So, how will Nikon stand out? The global shutter might be the key. If they're the first to bring a full frame global shutter camera to market with no compromises, they win at least for a while, but that win won't come cheap. The original Z9 launched at $5,499. That was seen as aggressive back then. Today, prices are going up with inflation, supply chain issues, and added features. Experts expect the Z92 to cost between $5,999 and $6,499. That's a serious investment. And it only goes up when you add pro lenses, memory cards, batteries, and accessories. It's not a camera for the casual beer. Section 6, who this camera is for let's be real. The Z92 is not for beginners, not even close. The Z9 was already a demanding camera and the Z92 will push that further. You need to know how to set custom autofocus modes, how to navigate complex menus, how to configure buttons. It's a deep camera with layers of customization. If you're just starting out, it can be overwhelming and then there's the size. It's big at a pro zoom lens and your setup is heavy, great for performance, not great for casual day trips. That's why experienced photographers say marry the lens, date the body. Lenses last, camera bodies evolve. If you're starting out, spend on good glass, learn with a more affordable body like the Z5, Z6 III, or the retro-inspired ZF, and when you're ready, really ready, you'll know it. That's when the Z92 will make sense. That's when its features will serve you, not confuse you, but for the pros, the Z92 won't be overkill. It'll be essential if your job depends on getting the shot every time, no matter the conditions, this camera could be the tool that makes the difference.